thanks everyone for coming. Uh, can you hear me well? Is it okay? Okay, so my name is Zoltán Boroknagy, and me and my colleague Peter Rózsa will talk about roll level modifications at petabyte scale via Apache Impala on Apache Iceberg. So should I use it? Okay, so is it better now? Is it better now? Okay. Okay, so agenda of this talk. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick background about table formats, starting from uh, uh, for, uh, with the Hive uh, legacy table format. Then I'm also going to give you a quick introduction to Apache Iceberg and Apache Impala. Okay, so let's start with uh, a little historical background. So let's see how tables look like uh, in Hive. So a table is a very simple concept. Basically, it is a directory on a distributed storage system. And if under that directory, there are similar uh, data files, similar in that way that uh, they, all, they all use the same data file format, for example, CSV, or they could also use Parquet, ORC, or any other uh, data file format. And they also need to be similar in a way that they uh, need to be in the same schema, so they need to store the same columns. If you have that, then that's okay, you have a Hive table. <coughs> but of course, in, in your system, you might have multiple uh, tables, and uh, you, so at the end, you need to have a catalog service, and via the catalog service, you can list uh, what tables are there in your system, and also where can you find your tables. And also other metadata information can be retrieved from there, for example, the schema and the uh, data file format for the tables. And the Hive Metastore uh, serves uh, as a catalog that implements this feature. Okay. Actually, things are a bit more complicated than that because tables uh, can be partitioned. For example, under, under the table directory, you can have partition directories. And actually, in the, par the partition directories can be partitioned further. So in this example, you can see we partition our data based on year, then also partition our data based on months and day and so on. And at the end, in the leaf folders, uh, we have the data files. Uh, the Hive Metastore also stores information about the partitions, uh, mainly for uh, partition pruning. Partition pruning is when you issue a select query and you put uh, conditions uh, uh, like predicates on partition columns. And uh, with the help of that, your query engine won't need to read uh, all the contents of your table, but only certain partitions. Okay. The Hive table format is very simple. So it is very easy for different uh, engines to interact with it. So interoperability is solved by its simplicity. Any engine that is able to read uh, files uh, from the distributed uh, sy uh, storage system or able to write files to the distributed storage system is able to interact with your table. Though there are a lot of shortcomings of five tables, for example, no AC transactions, role level modifications like deletes and updates, are really hard to achieve. If you end up having too many small files in your system, then it can uh, degrade the read performance. And this is an issue uh, which is called a small file issue, and it is hard to tackle in legacy Hive tables. Also, the scheme evolution, like adding new columns, renaming columns, is very limited. You cannot roll back to earlier table states, and you cannot use time travel, because the earlier table states are not stored, we don't have any information about them. Partitioning is also very simple, maybe too simple, and also hard to change. So basically only value-based partitioning is possible, like year or partition column equals to some value. And if you want to change the partition layout of your table, you need to rewrite everything, since the partitioning information is encoded in the uh, directory structure and the, uh, in the file structure. So Iceberg is a new generation table format. It is designed to handle uh, huge data sets. 
So it defines uh, how the metadata is stored and what is stored in that metadata. And it also defines how the data files can be organized, like what partitioning is allowed on the data files. Iceberg also comes with a Java library, and this helps interoperability. So uh, query engines can just import that Java library, and they are able to interact with the iceberg tables. OK, let's see at the anatomy of an iceberg table. At the top, you need to have some kind of catalog to know what tables are there in your system. The Hive Metastore uh, can serve as a, an iceberg catalog, actually. OK, so, and if you know what table you want to query, the catalog can tell you the exact current table state. And so if you follow that pointer, you will see a metadata file. This is basically the root of the iceberg metadata hierarchy of a table. And if you just follow the, in, uh, the indirections, the arrows, uh, you can discover a, uh, a consistent table snapshot, a consistent table uh, state. Because of that, it is not a problem if your query engine lags behind. For example, if it starts reading an earlier metadata file, following the arrows, following the indirections, it is still able to find a consistent snapshot of the table. Uh, Iceberg has quite advanced features. Thanks to its metadata layer, it provides ACID guarantees with uh, serialized snapshot isolation. Scheme evolution is also supported, like you can add columns, rename columns, reorder columns. Partitioning is very flexible. You can use transformation methods. For example, hash-based partitioning is supported. Partition evolution is also possible. It means that you can change the layout, uh, uh, the partitioning layout of your iceberg table without rewriting the old, the already uh, written data files. So it means that once you have changed the partition layout, only the new files that you are going to ingest to your table will be written according to the new partition spec. And time travel queries and rollback is also possible because the earlier table states are still there in the storage system until they are expired. Low-level modifications like delete, update, merge are also supported. Table maintenance operations like optimize, drop partition, rollback, expire snapshots, but Peter will go into details in that. Okay. Uh, Apache Impala is a distributed massively parallel system by distributed, it means that you can deploy a lot of uh, Impala uh, components, Impala daemons, uh, to lots of servers, potentially to hundreds of nodes. And how you interact with Impala? Basically, you give a SQL query to an Impala coordinator. The Impala coordinator parses and analyzes your query with the help of catalog D to retrieve metadata of the tables from external systems. <coughs> And after the query analysis and planning is done, the coordinator is able to spread the, sp the query execution to multiple executors, to lots of executors. <coughs> then the executors that are written in C++ uh, for high query performance uh, execute the query fragments. And at the end, they return the results to the coordinator, and the coordinator passes the results back to the client. <coughs> Apache Impala is a hybrid project. It means it's written in both in Java and C++. The parts where we need a high performance are written in C++. So basically, these are the executors. Uh, Impala is optimized for high query performance. So it does a lot of caching, like it caches the metadata, and it also caches uh, remote uh, reads uh, in the executors. Runtime code generation is used uh, via the LLVM library to speed up queries. And in the past, we had limited uh, write capabilities, especially for uh, file system-based tables. So <coughs> only inserts were possible, but with the help of Weisberg, <coughs> also delete and update statements are, are possible now. Uh, Impala is a quite uh, major product. It supports various storage engines, lots of uh, file formats like Parquet, ORC, Evro. Different authentication methods uh, are supported. <coughs> and also fine-grained authorization policies 
like raw, uh, like uh, raw filtering and color masking is supported. Impala has an admission controller, which means uh, it can limit the number of concurrent queries uh, that are being executed in parallel. Uh, Impala has spilling operators. It means that you can define memory limits for your queries. For example, you can set the memory limit, to, uh, for example, to five gigabyte, and Impala will try to execute, <coughs> execute your query by using uh, only five uh, gigabytes per executor. Uh, and lots of other features that I'm not going uh, into detail for now. And so let me hand over to, to Peter to talk about the uh, role level modifications. Thanks, Zoltan. Uh, so my name is Peter Roja, and I will talk about the uh, role level modifications and table maintenance utilities for uh, Apache Impala. So uh, for modification techniques, uh, we will uh, get to merge and read and copy and write. And after that, we will uh, see how delete, update, and merge statements are implemented in Impala for uh, Apache Iceberg. So uh, the merge and read uh, strategy is uh, mm, tracking delete rows in a separate delete file. These delete files can be equality deletes or uh, position deletes. This strategy is good for uh, so, uh, small uh, frequent modifications. It has a low write amplification, so we can uh, pass the write uh, delete files and row deltas. But uh, we have to pay this cost at the read side, so when we uh, read back these tables, we have to first uh, apply the deletes to uh, our uh, data files. The other strategy is copy and write. It's basically just rewriting the old data files with the new modified data. It's useful for infrequent uh, large modifications. It has a high write amplification because it has to rewrite the files, but has no read amplification, so uh, there's no read impact. Uh, using copy and write. Uh, Apache Impala uh, tries to focus on merge or read, uh, but we can also uh, read the copy and write uh, strategy files, and uh, we can uh, write the merge or read. We can write uh, two tables with the merge or read strategy as well. About the position and equality deletes, so the position delete is uh, just a fixed file schema. It contains the file name and the position. It requires data loading. So every time when we query our table, we have to load the data files and the delete files and apply these uh, changes to the data files. It has more efficient reads. Equality deletes are a bit different. They are uh, using a file schema originated from the uh, data file. It basically stores the, uh, the expressions uh, defined by the delete statement. So uh, when we target a row by uh, a property, we will store this uh, targeting expression and we will uh, read it back uh, when we read the equality deletes. It doesn't require that much uh, data loading, but it has the slower street performance. So let's talk about the uh, delete statement and how we implemented it. So uh, if you can see in the uh, example, the delete statement can be re rewritten into an insert into select statement. For that, first we have to uh, expose the uh, delete table, the position delete table uh, of uh, the iceberg table. We added an abstraction to Impala uh, as a virtual table. So now this uh, position delete table can be uh, targeted. In the select statement, we can see that there's two uh, virtual columns selected, the input file name and the file position. And we can see that the filtering expression is uh, converted to this uh, select statement as well. So when we uh, gather this result set with this select expression, uh, later then we can write it to the uh, position delete table, and in the background it will create a position delete file, which will be uh, read back when we query the table. So let's see how we can read the uh, delete files. We basically doing uh, an anti-join between the data and the delete records. We have a specific iceberg v2 join operator for that, and we have a three-layer evolution of how, how we are doing it. But Zoltan has a specific talk about this uh, topic today, so I uh, won't go into details. So let's talk about the update statement. We try to use the same uh, analogy what we use for the delete statement. So 
and the update statement is uh, re rewritten to a select statement as well. But uh, we can see here that we use the uh, content of our iceberg tables, so our target tables, properties, or columns are listed uh, in the select list. And uh, with this select, we, we are trying to uh, create the, the modified data set, and this modified data set will be persisted uh, at the end of the plan. To make it possible, we have to add the uh, add a new type of data sync to Impala. Data syncs uh, in Impala are just uh, operators that are writing to uh, the file system. So we added uh, multi data sync. So now uh, this uh, select query can be uh, written to the disk by using two data syncs, and one of the data syncs are writing uh, the uh, delete files, and the other are writing the uh, uh, data files. So let's see how the merge statement works. It's similar to the update, so it's similar to the delete. So we try to reuse the analogy again, but it's a bit uh, more different. So with the merge statement, we have a target table and the source table and the join condition. So we have to uh, keep track uh, both the tables, so the source table and the uh, target table. But at the end, we have to write only the uh, target uh, tables columns. For that, uh, we also need the target's position information. So uh, what we saw in the delete uh, statement, we are using the uh, file name information and the uh, position information, which is gathered in this uh, rewritten query. And there's also a row presence indicator, uh, which decides that uh, in the result set, uh, which row contains the target columns and the source columns and both. This is useful to uh, evaluate the merge cases. Uh, for example, uh, this statement has two merge cases, a when not matched case where we are inserting the source tables uh, content and the when matched uh, case when we are updating the target tables A column with the source columns, uh, source tables A column. Oh, it seems the graph is broken, so maybe I will try to uh, handle it from memory. So the merge operator uh, is a newly added operator to the, uh, the back end of Impala, and the merge sync is, uh, is a new thing as well. So the merge operator is uh, useful to uh, evaluate those cases that are listed in the previous example. So after we evaluate the case, then we are writing that whether the, the row, what we evaluated, should go to the delete sync or to the uh, data sync or to both. And uh, after that, this uh, uh, operator connects to the merge sync, and the merge sync contains the uh, delete file writer and the data file writer, and uh, it routes each row to one of each or to both. And to get to the graph. So this is the target table, this is the source table. We are doing a, doing a full outer join here. We are doing the uh, merge operator here. We are sending the data to the merge sync, and this is the data sync, and this is the delete sync. So let's talk about table maintenance. Uh, we have three kind of issues that we are trying to handle with these uh, maintenance uh, operations. The first one is the read performance degradation. Zoltan already talked about the small file problem. So if we are using a lot of frequent modifications, then we are creating a lot of files, thus file descriptors, and so on. So to solve this problem, we somehow have to get rid of a lot of files, and the solution for that is, is compaction. Uh, the other uh, problem is uh, that if we have some data regulations that the data, what we deleted, have to be removed from the physical medium uh, forever, then we have to keep a mechanism that uh, does this job for us. And there's another problem when we are facing a corrupt table. So when our ETL job just uh, somehow uh, writes bad data, then we have to know that there's a good known state and we can restore to this state. So let's talk about the optimized statement. The optimized statement is responsible for merging the delete files and combines the small files into larger ones. This uses the latest uh, iceberg schema and revises the table according to the latest partition spec. 
It's basically a major compaction. So at the end of the optimized table statement, we will uh, have just data files, and our delete files are merged into these uh, data files. So we have uh, an option for our optimized table statement, the file size threshold uh, megabyte. And it's useful if we don't want to compact our whole table. The small file issue, issue uh, basically comes from the really, really small files. So if we can give an upper limit to the merge, sorry, for the uh, optimized uh, table statement, then it just compacts the really small files. Let's talk about execute your rollback statement. So it's useful when we have a corrupted table state, it restores the table to a known good state. So we can select uh, a snapshot ID or we can set uh, a timestamp to uh, roll back our table to that state before that timestamp. Uh, if we would like to query our table uh, like it's the timestamp listed in this example, there's a different option for uh, Impala. It can query tables uh, based on snapshot IDs and timestamp as well. And let's talk about expired snapshots. So if we would like to uh, delete our accumulated uh, and no longer used uh, references for uh, our table, there is this statement where we can uh, give a timestamp. And before the timestamp, all of the snapshot files are deleted and their reference data files as well. We can also use a timestamp for that or a snapshot ID. So in this talk today, we talked about how Impala gained advanced features thanks to Iceberg. We checked the newly added or recently added row level modification statements. And we talked about the table maintenance and how we can keep our table's health uh, up. <laughs>